State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848 may have the appearances, please. Good morning, Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichell appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning. Please state your name, sir. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as an authorized represent representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for the discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and for the record I do not identify as that name nor consent to being called as that name. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks uh, is present in person in custody. He is wearing street clothes. He's wearing a suit and tie. He's also wearing a mask. Again, I do not consent or agree to being called that name. Your lack of consent is noted. I would note, though, um, you've not provided me with a different name. Number one. Number two, every inmate communication form has the name Daryl Brooks Jr. So, I like to refer to the defendants by their name, frankly, out of respect for them, to not continually use defendant over and over again. Not that that would be improper, it's just a practice. So I'm gonna still keep referring to you as Mr. Brooks. I know you as Mr. Brooks. Again, you've filed all sorts of inmate communication forms with that name, and you've never given me another name for which to call you. So I just want you to know that's not a disrespectful thing. It's out of respect for these proceedings. Um, and, uh, but at times I'll still refer to you as the defendant. Uh, no, no disrespect taken whatsoever, Your Honor. Um, and for the record, um, I still would cons not consent to that name or uh, agree to that name. All right. No yeah. respect, no disrespect taken whatsoever. Your position is noted. All right. Do you have any documents to file today, sir? Yes, I do. All um, right. You can hand that to the bailiff. Just very brief uh, things I would like to put on the record. I'll have the bail first show it to the state as that is proper, and then it'll come to me. the record to reflect I have received a document that has a caption uh, for this case a heading that says bond uh, then two short paragraphs and then a signature at the bottom with the name Daryl Edward Brooks jr. authorized representative of Daryl E Brooks all rights reserved um, I've reviewed it sir I would note uh, it will be made part of the file uh, you do not reference any um, law as it relates to this request or what I would deem a request. Um, there's no constitutional provision, statutory pr provision, or common law associated with this. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking me to do with it as well. I don't see a clear request for relief as well. So. Um, it will be filed, but I don't, I'm not going to address it any further. Do you um, want a copy of that for your record, sir? Yes, I do. The time stamped original copy, if I may. Um, and also, um, to my knowledge, um, the filing is proper, um, unless Your Honor can um, provide verified uh, law of, of your own that that is not a proper document. 
Um, I think it's very clear, clear what the document is referring to. Um, the language is is all together. Um, it's a very very clear document in it in its entirety. And uh, Mr. Brooks, I would direct your attention to section eight hundred two point zero one, which governs motions, how made, and the form. That document does not comply with that. What was the law that you cited? Uh, I draw your attention to section 802.01, which is the statute related to motions. And does that refer specifically to that filing? It refers to any request that's made to a judge or in a court of law. That, to me, does not provide a legal or factual basis for the request that you're making. Um, so that's how I will address it. Um, for the record, I believe it does, Your Honor. Um, you never cited the same thing with the other filings. So it, that's leading me to believe that um, it's just that document that's not being accepted when I have the other timestamp filings for the same uh, documents that I file. Every other document is, is filed in the same manner. Every last one of them, and, and no, no exception with that one, Your Honor. Even with a liberal uh, reading of that document, um, I'm not sure what it is you're asking me. Um, it's not going to prevent this court from proceeding forward and continuing on with the trial um, and having uh, the jury brought in and the next witness called. For the record, Your Honor, will you, can you state why... Um, because it's clear what this is referring to. It's referring to why there's no bond uh, mentioned or stated in the court document, the, the docket sheet. There's no uh, bond in any of in any of these writings. Not not one time does it mention it. And so that was what this was referring to. Um, I understand what it's referring to, sir. Sir, also, there's no legal basis for your for argument. Record. Also, so, for the record, this docket is not a certified copy, which is what I requested. I do not control the uh, clerk's office. You need to make a specific request to the custodian of the court record, which is the clerk of court for a certified I, I, copy. I, I, I did that, that can't done. be done here uh, in this courtroom. You have to do that through an inmate communication form. That's, that's what I did, Your Honor. The, the ICF should be on record that I re specifically requested. I specifically requested a certified copy. Sir, I'm not in charge of that, so I'm not going to address that any further. So my understanding is a certified copy was provided to this you. This is not the certified copy no. that I'm holding, Your Honor. I I, again, you can take that up with the clerk of court. That is beyond uh, the scope of what I am addressing here. The custodian of the record needs to reply to that. You have recourse available to you, but it's not through this case. So with that, I'm going to move on. Let's have the jury brought out. I was uh, not provided with exactly what I asked for. If, the, um, if I'm told by the court to submit an ICF, for any requesting, and I requested specifically a certified copy of the docket sheet and was not provided with what I specifically asked for, then Sir, how... Sir, I'm not, I can't address that any further. So again, I, I would like you that need to take that up with the clerk of court and you can communicate directly uh, with her office. Can but I'm not going to do it through this court proceeding. I would like that stated for the record that I did not receive what I specifically asked for, and I'm sure that the ICF is on record. I can get... Mr. Brooks, for the record, we're on the record. And okay. so everything that we're saying is on the record. So it's noted. Bring the jury out, please. Um, also, I have one more thing I wanted to state for the record. Go ahead. Um, which was also submitted via inmate communication form so that should be on the record and it should be filed I, I, I know it should have been received by now it was addressed to Miss Monica Pass and it was in um, it was asking for uh, the complaint that was filed it was three different complaints and they they're found in the docket sheet one from 1123 of 2021 from 1129th of 2021 which would be the amended Complaint one from uh, January 12 of 2022, which would be the second I amended specifically complaint. Specifically asked for um, copies of those to be provided as they were not 
and any discovery. If you're looking for just copies, I'm happy to print those off for you. I've already provided some of those things to you. I hear you saying you want certified copies. That would not be provided by me. Are you looking for certified copies or just copies? Certified copies. All right, then that will have to be addressed by clerk of court pause. So how would I do that? Because I, I can't, sir, it, I, I've already true? told you, you need to make the request to her. I'm not the custodian of the record, so. I addressed it that way, Your Honor. I addressed it the way I was told to address it from My the court. My understanding is it went to her. So with that, let's have the jury brought out. Your position's noted. All right. Your Honor, can we address the subject matter jurisdiction before the jury comes out? The no, jury comes out? We've already done that. And is that a judicial determination that you're making not to address the subject matter jurisdiction which has yet to be proven at this point? It has not Mr. been verified. Brooks, please, the jury's coming out. I know what you're doing, but just I've already addressed that. So is that a judicial determination that you're making? My decision on the record stands, sir. And I would like the record to reflect that you have not shown verified proof of subject matter jurisdiction whatsoever. <coughs> and that by refusing to answer that is a tactic agreement by you, Your Honor, which you understand what that means. I know you do. Mr. Brooks, I have not entered into any such agreement. All right, thank you, everyone. You may be seated and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, we are proceeding uh, with this trial and the statement calls next witness. Ma'am, I'm going to direct your attention to, to November 21st, 2021. Were you at the City of Waukesha Christmas Parade on that date? Yes. Were you there as a spectator? No, I was in the parade. I was in one of the units. Okay. And which group were you with? The Milwaukee Dancing Grannies. We were like sisters. We were a sisterhood. Did you have uniforms? Yes, we did. Can you describe them for the jury? Objection. Overruled. Do you have any answer? Brown uh, They were long skirts with white fur, they were blue, with white fur on the bottom, blue jackets with white fur for cuffs and around the neck and a white fur hat. Did you have, I'm assuming if you were dancing to music that you had something that played the music? Yes, we have a music vehicle. Where would that musical music vehicle be in relationship to the group who was performing? Right behind the group. Oh, hold on, there's uh, been an objection. Um, it's noted, it's overruled, her answer may stand. Just in the future, if there is an objection, uh, wait until I've ruled on it and then answer if I say uh, overruled, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, relevance. Grounds for the relevancy. Keep going. Thank you. So did you also have people walking with um, the performers in the parade to give support? Uh, yes, we have volunteers. We have two volunteers that carry the banner and a volunteer that will give us ice chips. It was our usual banner carrier, uh, a young girl, Allie. You said there's also another support person who carried ice chips. Yes. Do you know who that was last year? Overruled. You may answer. Grounds, grounds for the overrule. I should. You can answer. Okay. okay, yes, uh, Bill, uh, one of our dancing granny's husbands. Is that Wilhelm Hospital? Is that his full name? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Why don't you describe for the jury exactly what's in front of you? Objection. Overruled. Grounds. Jury answer. Okay, we have nine that people that were in the parade. And when there are an uneven number, there is somebody who is in the slot. Okay. And uh, it was my turn to be in the slot. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. And the, the left-hand side, as I'm looking at that, it's Ginny Sorensen and Allie. Is that correct? Yes. And I'm going to actually um, ask that this be published also for the jury and admitted into evidence. Objection. We have yet to see what, what's being talked about, being shown. Does Mr. It's up now. Brooks have a copy? I believe it's up in front of him now. All right. Um, give him a minute to look at it. 
objection. Not consent to being called that name, nor do I agree to being called that name. Um, based upon the testimony of this witness, uh, Exhibit 54 is received permission to publish as granted. Objection. Noted. On what grounds? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to be specifically addressing, uh, when, so please respect that. Um, I respectfully the, request a legal re reconsideration of your ruling. Mr. Brooks, now is not the time for that. The objection has been overruled. I expect that you will honor that, and we will continue without interruption. Go ahead. I do, I do honor it, Your Honor. Um, for the record, I respectfully, respectfully reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. Keep going. Thank you. The nine people who are listed in the boxes following or behind the banner, does that accurately reflect the lineup that um, you had on November 21st of last year? Yes. Okay. Overruled. You, her answer may stand. Wow. Your Honor, I'm now going to show the witness exhibit 53. And does that accurately reflect how your group on November 21st of last year? Okay. Um, I would, Sorry, you were shaking your head yes. Is that a yes? Yes, that's how it was. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have said that out loud. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That's um, what I'm here for, to make sure the record's clear. Okay. I would ask the court to admit um, this Exhibit 53 into evidence and um, publish it for the jury. Objection. Overruled Exhibit uh, 53 is received permission to publish as granted. Grounds for the overrule. Ma'am, I'm going to play it straight through, and then we'll go back and go through it um, and pause it occasionally for you and I to identify everyone, okay? okay. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. The statement continue. All right, is that a legal determination that you don't have to give me the grounds for the overrule as I have objected on Mr. the record? Brooks, stop interrupting. I've made my ruling. Let's keep going. Go ahead. Thank you. I ask for a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law. Or is that a tactic agreement, Your Honor? Bam, that was the routine at the beginning of the parade, it looks like. Yes. Correct? And will you be able to identify each of the people if I go through the exhibit and kind of pause it occasionally for you to tell us um, who they are and a little bit about them? Objection, Thank you. Overrule. Uh, yeah. Grounds for the overrule. Not hearsay. If we can pause it. Who's on the right side? The right side would be Sharon. Lee's on the left. When you say the left side, the left side of the street was where Lee Owen was, or the left side of the uh, picture as you're looking at your screen? Uh, Lee was on the left, oh, right behind Ginny. Miss B. Oops. It's okay. <laughs> oh, there's been an objection. Um, it's overruled, but I would caution the state about leaving the witness. Okay. Go ahead. You may answer. Okay. So okay. right behind Ginny was Lee Owen. Yes. Is her name, full name Leanna Owen? Lee was... Oh, overruled. <coughs> Lee was very close to Ginny. <coughs> they worked together a lot for, for the group. Circle who you think is Kathy Schmeling. Okay. There. Okay. And um, you said the other person was who? Lola. Okay, can you circle Lola? Hospel. She is the wife of Bill that was hit. Okay. Um, noted, it's overruled. Her answer may stand. Next question. Grouse. And you stated that Wilhelm or Bill was a support person that was marching the parade that day? Yes. If we can pause. Can you identify the person who is behind <laughs> Lola and uh, Kathy on, in the video? Yeah, she would be in the middle. That yeah, is... Lola, there's been an objection. It's overruled. Grounds. Um, she may answer. Grounds. That's Tamara. Um, Rosentier. It's hard to pronounce her name, but Rosentier. Rosentreeter? Would that sound right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you circle her on the screen? Okay. That's her right there. Okay. And if we can pause the screen here. Can you identify those people? This is Tamara Duran, and this is Kathy. 
Is that Zartek? Zartek or something like that. Um, hold on, there has been an objection. I would just note for the record, Exhibit 54 is in front of this witness and it does have the first and last names and she's already said that it accurately reflects um, the people who are marching with the Dancing Grannies on November 21st of last year. That was not the question, it was, it was leading. Understood. Um, <laughs> for purposes of identification though, I'm gonna instruct her to turn the 50, Exhibit 54 over to make sure that her testimony today is from her recollection and not from reading from the form. I'm gonna pause. Um, do you know who that is? This would be Bill. Thank you. And that's uh, Bill Wilhelm. Pardon Do you know the last name? It's been rephrased. Bill. Okay. That would be Bill Hospital. Okay. And do you recall him wearing a hat that day as shown in the picture? Objection leading the witness. <coughs> um, overruled. Grounds. Relevance. Did you hear something unusual behind you? No, because the music vehicle was right behind me. Did you so, at any time turn around and see something unusual? Yeah, as we were going and I was dancing, when I would turn my, I seen a streak of red coming on my right side. How fast was that streak of red going? It was going pretty fast. Hold on. Um, the objections noted it's overruled. Her answer may stand. Grounds for the overrule. Relevance. From the time that you saw the red vehicle on your right, um, striking Bill and Tamara, did it ever, did you see it slow down at all? No, it just hit them, and as he was coming in, he, he started then going toward the middle, where he hit two more people, and then veered to the left and killed two more. I think you said it struck the people in the front. Who were the people that you just testified to that died? Objection, lead the witness. Overruled. Grounds. Oh, uh, he came oh, from on. the right. Oh. Hit two. Oh, whoops. whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Was not leading. Go ahead. You may answer. I believe they were Ginny and um, Lee. I bring up Exhibit 54 again. Go ahead. And I'd ask that be published to the jury. It's previously been admitted as evidence. Go ahead. Objection. What's the relevancy of the video? The court's already admitted it. It is shown to the jury. Go ahead. Ma'am, can you, when the car went through, can you approximate, approximate where Bill was on this chart? You can put an X where you think he was. Bill was about uh, here. I thought the sheet wasn't being shown. Um, you specifically made a ruling for the sheet to be turned over. Uh, that was during her testimony. She's now being asked to annotate the exhibit. So it's proper. Your objections noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, can you um, show the jury using this chart, and maybe you just using a line, the path that the red um, vehicle took? It struck there hit Tamara, Betty, Lee, and then Jenny. After the vehicle went by, what did you do? It all happened in a matter of seconds. And after the car kept going, I looked on the road and all I seen were bodies. I thought I was in a war because there were just so many and I just went into shock and I just grabbed my jacket like this and went to each body to see who it was and if I could help. I'm gonna, you said that you grabbed your jacket, you held both um, sides of your jacket up to your neck area, would that be a fair statement? Yes, I just, Objection I think relevancy. I needed. Hold on. Okay. The objections noted, it's overruled, her answer and the description provided for the record by Attorney Basie, I would note, was accurate. Um, you may continue. Grounds for the overrule. Already noted. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Um, so you said that you were in shock. Um, I just went into shock seeing. 
the people that you saw laying in the road were all of those people from your group? Objection, yes. Hearsay. Overruled, not hearsay. And did you go by Bill Hospital? Bill was on the right side. He was he kind of was thrown on the sidewalk. Did you go by him at all or yes. objection? Okay. I talked to him. Hold I on. There's been an objection. Oh, I didn't hear him. <laughs> um, it's overruled. And right. her answer that she gave me. I statement. didn't even state the objection, but Okay. Do you know what Exhibit 15 is? No, I don't know what this really is. Does it appear to be a map or something else? Objection Pardon? being the witness. Um, overruled, she may answer that. Does it appear to be a map or something else? Yes, where there's a lot of names. Do you see uh, a purple line on that map? Yeah, with all the purple stars on. Cor or I don't know if they're purple stars, but I see some yellow stars, some orange stars. Yes. Objection, yes. leading the witness. Um, this has previously been marked and admitted into evidence. I think right. I can direct her attention I, to these items. Agreed. I think the your objection is noted. It's overruled. This exhibit has previously been received. I think the stars are the color are pretty obvious. What they are. There's various color stars, and it's again, the exhibit has been stars. received. The jury can determine for itself later on. Um, what colors they are, the meaning of them. Uh, but go ahead, you may ask uh, your next question of this witness. There is a box that's labeled Dancing Grannies. Do yes. you see that? Yes. And it has seven names in that box. Are those all part of the Dancing Grannies? Objection, leading the witness. Overruled, she may answer. Grounds. She may I answer. answer. Go ahead. Um, with the exception of Bill, he was Lola's husband. And you see that there's a black line that directs it to a yellow star. Do you see that? Objection, Lena Williams. Yes. Um, overruled, this exhibit has previously been received. It's fair for the state to direct the witness's attention to a particular part. And her answer may stand. Does that appear to be the location where your group was struck? Okay, yes. Starting at zero zero, we're going to play it for approximately 10 seconds. Um, and then I'll ask you some questions about it, okay? Thank you. Does that accurately depict what occurred to your group on November 21st, 2021? Yes, it does. I'm going to um, ask that it be admitted into evidence and published to the jury. Objection. Overruled. Browse. It's relevant. Ma'am, the group that you saw on the right-hand side of the screen, was that the Dancing Grannies? Yes, it was. And did you see headlights coming through your group? No, because it came from the back. I'm sorry, in the video, did you see headlights oh, coming through yes. the group? Oh, yes. Objection, leading the Yes. Overruled. You may answer. And you answered? Yes. Okay, thank you. I want to show it one more time for the jury so that they can now focus on the headlights on the vehicle. Objection. Relevancy. Uh, your objection's noted. It's overruled. Uh, permission to publish once again. Grounds. Is granted. And your honor, the state is going to play it at 50%. Grounds. Objection. Grounds. Noted. Overruled. Grounds. Relevance. If you can start, please. I request a legal reconsideration of your ruling. Denied. Grounds of the denial. For the record, may I request a legal or factual basis for your ruling? Is that a legal determination, Your Honor? Are you making a judicial determination? You may continue, Attorney Basie. Did you see the body come forward and fly front in front of the truck? Um, no, me being in back. I'm sorry, in the video, did you see the body Objection. flying in front of the Please. truck? It's not moving. No. In the video that you just saw, you didn't see a body? Oh, yeah, on the video, but not. Right. And do you know who that was? Um, yes. 
Who was that? Uh, when they had it on TV, that was no, the man, right? I'm sorry. Who was the bo the body that went flying in the street that came towards the front of the screen? Hold on one second. That last answer, I'm going to because it was non-responsive, but I'm going to strike it, instruct the jury to disregard it, and then if you could state your question again. Certainly. Um, if we can go to um, Exhibit 55 again, to approximately the 10-second mark. Are you withdrawing that last question then? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. The question? It's been withdrawn. May it be struck from the record? It's been withdrawn. May it be struck from the record? It, there does not need to be struck, so the request is denied. It's been withdrawn. May I ask for a legal and factual The marks of the attorneys legal? and questions of the attorneys are not evidence. It's the answers that are evidence, so that's why it's not being struck. You may continue, Attorney Basie. Thank you. Do you see a body probably in the middle of the screen on the left-hand side? On the ground? Yes. Do you know who that is? Well, it's hard to tell who it's, but it, that would probably be Ginny. Okay. Thank you. They'll be in front of you on the screen, Exhibit 152. I'm going to uh, show it to the witness the entire 14 seconds to see if she recognizes this. Do you recognize what's depicted in that video is what occurred and what you saw on November 21st of last year? Uh, yes, okay. but when the car went hit them it was you know it was on my side and I did see them flying okay. or anything okay. I just but you saw the car come through and you previously <laughs> testified that you saw the car strike them you didn't see where they went is that yes. right? leaving the witness um, overruled that answer may stand I'm gonna ask that this be admitted into evidence and published to the jury objection where's the relevancy Grounds the objections noted it's overruled and exhibit 152 is received permission to publish is granted grounds for your ruling your honor relevance i'm going to play it at full speed initially and then i'm going to play it at 50 percent so i will ask you questions after i play it full speed okay mm -hmm. if we can uh, play the whole 15 seconds with some vehicle strike um, in that exhibit, <coughs> Exhibit 152. Objection. Leading the witness, uh, saw the hold video. On. Tomorrow, saw the video. Hold on. There's been an Oops. objection, everyone. Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled. Now you may answer Ground, the question. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. <coughs> it's overruled. You may answer. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. Go ahead. You may Tomorrow, answer. Tomorrow, Duran. Thank you. I'm not going to play it at 50% speed for the jury. And that was the car that you saw travel in front of you? Yes. Objection leading the witness. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. It's overruled. Next Grounds. question. Ma'am, I'm now going to, um, if I did not already do it, I'd ask that Exhibit 52, 152 be admitted into evidence. I would then direct the witness's attention to Exhibit 153, which will show just in front of your screen, okay? Grounds. Um, exhibit 152 was received already. No need to address the request for grounds by Mr. Brooke due to that. And then the exhibit is up in front of the court, the witness, and the parties, but not published. Objection. I do not consent to or agree to being called that name, Your Honor, for the record. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Thank you. This clip Would is... Would that be noted for the record, Your Honor? Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Thank you. May this... that be... Noted for the Mr. record. Mr. Brooks, Your Honor. stop interrupting. I just want to make Mr. sure. Mr. Brooks, it's on, stop. I just want to make sure it's on the record. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Thank you. Um, this clip is 38 seconds in, in length, Your Honor. 
Ma'am, is that um, your group in the Watch Your Christmas Parade last November? Yes. Okay. I'd ask that Exhibit 153 be admitted into evidence and be published for the jury. Objection. Relevancy. Exhibit 153 is received. It may be published to the jury. The objection is noted and overruled. Ma'am, I'm going to have it played at full speed, and then I'll ask you some questions and then play it at half speed, okay? Mm -hmm. Clear mics. Ma'am, what did you see in Exhibit 153 that was just played before you? I seen Bill being hit and thrown towards the sidewalk. And that's Bill Hostel? Yes. I'm going to show it now to, the, to you and the jury. Just a clip of it, starting at zero seconds. I see we may have a future granny in, in front of us here with the green hair. Sure looks like it. <laughs> Rather than see. Um, your objections noted, sustained, the jury will strike that last question and answer. Further, thank you. Ma'am, I'm going to give Mr. Brooks an opportunity to ask you questions as well. Please answer those for him. Go ahead, your cross. Uh, during your testimony, you kept referring to um, a he, he, he. Uh, who were you referring to when you said he, he, he? I can't understand him. Can you please uh, state your question a little bit louder? She was not yeah. Able here. I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry. You um, need to be closer to the microphone or projector I, voice, I, okay? I got it. I got it. Thank you. Um, during your testimony, you kept referring to a he, he, he. Like a lot of times you would say he, he, he. Uh, who were you referring to by the he? Who did you mean by the he? He? Yes. When it was showing Bill. No, not, not Bill the, would be the he. Um, you stated that you saw a red vehicle uh, sh strike the, the grannies. Do you remember if that was, or... Let me back up. Do you remember what type of vehicle you saw? It was like an SUV. It wasn't just a car. It was, you know, the flat back. I'm bad for cars. And all I know is I've seen the red streak, and then all of a sudden I've seen the car in front of me. So would you describe it as a car? Um... It was a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and how close did it come to you, if you recall? I would say several feet. I was in front of the music vehicle, and it came around the, the music vehicle on the right side, and that's where Bill and Tamara were. And I was a little bit this way because I was directly behind the music vehicle. Were you were you able to see into the vehicle in any way? Was I able to what? To to see inside of the vehicle. No, because it came behind me. So so you didn't get a look at the driver at all? No, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Do you recall what happened when people were struck by the vehicle? No, I couldn't see them being struck from where I was. I, the vehicle was big, and it was after the vehicle went through our group that I seen all the people that were struck. Um, earlier you testified to uh, people being thrown to the side of the street. Um, would it be fair to say that in 
and I'm going off your last answer to the last question. Would it be fair to say that you didn't see that with your own eyes? No, that's where they were found. But you didn't see it with your own eyes? No, I couldn't. Um, you also stated that a few of the people that were struck died instantly. Would that be fair to say? That died instantly, you mean? Yeah, you, you stated that a few people that were struck died instantly. Would that be fair to say? Some of them, yeah. And how, how would you know for sure that they died instantly if you didn't see them struck? Because uh, the police found uh, two of them on the sidewalk, one on the left, one on the right. They were already dead. So were you told by the police that they were dead? That what? Were you told by the police that they had passed away? I could see they were working on them and weren't getting anywhere. They were trying to get the heart started with the heart machines. Nothing was working. And you, you know that for sure? I seen them working on them, yes. Not but, all of them, but on some of them. So was it fair to say at that time that you had no... Uh, medical diagnosis at that point in time? Nobody gives nobody diagnosis. They just were working on them and trying to get them revived, but so, they couldn't do it. Um, you stated that uh, there was a, mu a music van or some My, sort? Our views, a music vehicle. And, and you also stated that you couldn't hear what was going on behind you because the music van. Would that be fair to say? That's right. I didn't hear anything. I just seen a red streak when it came past me. So would it be fair to say that if a vehicle was honking a horn, you wouldn't have heard it if it was behind you? I don't know. No, there was no horns. But you don't know for sure because you stated that the music was playing pretty loudly. Would that be fair to say? That's for sure. But whether I would hear a horn or not, I don't know. Were you able to see a, a license plates number of the vehicle? No. I was just shocked that a vehicle would be in the parade route. I didn't have time to read a license plate. And you stated uh, that there is a, also a member of your group named Lola. Named what? Lola. Lola, yes. It was her husband, Bill. And she, to, to your knowledge, to your recollection, Lola was not injured? No. Did you see anyone behind you struck? No, because I was behind the music vehicle. I mean, in front of the music vehicle. And you yourself were, weren't injured, right? No. no. The car couldn't get at me because they would have to go through the car. At one point in, uh, in your uh, earlier testimony, you pointed to the defendant table and said, that's him from the news. Any reason why you would say that? From the news? I, yeah, didn't, I didn't say that. You testified that you saw, you pointed to the defendant's table and said, that's him from the news, and you were cut off right in mid-sentence. I wasn't saying that at all. So have you ever seen any news coverage of the incident? Um, from, like from Lola, I knew that her, that Bill had died during surgery that evening. And so I knew that from her, because she was at the hospital with him. I knew about... Um, Ma'am, did you hear the question about, uh, about seeing news reports? And just be a little more specific on the time. I don't okay? know I'll, what I'll, you I'll mean about news reports. 
At, Fair enough. On the regular news or but he'll rephrase. Okay. At any time, did you do you recall seeing any news reports related to the incident? At any time. It was on the news. Yes. So so it would be fair to say that you watched reports of the incident. When it was on the regular news in the evening. And do you recall who else was not injured from your group? Besides oh, yeah. besides Lola? Uh the four of us were not injured. Uh do you recall the names of who was not injured? Um Kathy Z, Sharon Millard, um, me and Lola and Kathy. The other Kathy. There's two Kathy's. Both both Kathy's to your knowledge were not injured? No, they weren't. We were all that was left standing. Do you recall about what time you left the parade after the incident? What do you mean after the incident? Do, do you recall what time you, you left? So Kathy Z's family took her home, so they gave me a ride right away, too. And you don't recall about what time that was? No. That would be fair with, a, with everything else going on. Were, were you there with any of your family members, immediate family or anything? My immediate family members, just my husband. And he was driving the music vehicle. Was he, in, was he injured in any way? No. Outside of being shocked by what well, he was seeing. Phys physical, physically, physical injury. Did he, no, did he suffer no, any physical? he was in the car. Did you ever uh, file any claims related to the incident? I believe not of the incident, no, because I was there when they were talking to the gals that weren't hurt. They were like interviewing us. The the four of you, correct? The four that weren't, uh, the two, yeah, the two passes. Yeah, the ones that were left, yeah. Um, do you know if they filed any claims related to the incident? If what? Do you know if they filed any claims related to the incident? Objections. Grounds. Cause for speculation. Grounds. <clears throat> um, the way that he asked it is uh, overruled. Um, so you may answer if you know. Okay. Um, no, because we were all together and came to every interview that they needed from us. Do you recall uh, seeing or reading any complaints related to the incident? Objection. Grounds? Sustained as to the form of the question. You don't have to answer that. Okay. Should I rephrase the question? or? It was sustained as to the form of the question. <clears throat> At any time during uh, any interviews with law enforcement, were you shown a complaint related to the incident? Objection. Back. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Were you informed that it may be a possibility that you might be called to testify in this matter? Um, a lot later, um, not at the time, we, we, I had no idea of testimony until. Would you, would you say much later, as you say, would, would that refer to weeks, months? Months. I was in no shape at the time to testify or talk about anything. Uh, do you recall seeking to testify, w wanting to testify? No, I didn't ask to. This just happened when we would be in our interviews with, and then. So it would be, it would be fair to say that you were asked or yes. subpoenaed? Yes. 
Do you recall by whom? I imagine the DA, sir. When you say the DAs, do you mean the district attorney's office? Yes. Did they ever identify to you as being the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Uh, sustained. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Relevance grounds. Do you recall ever being told that there was a plaintiff in this matter? No, it's just I was interviewed a few times, the five of us, um, and that was pretty much the end of it until months ago where... I think probably a little explanation is needed. Um, are you aware what a plaintiff is? Objection relevant. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Next question, Mr. Brooks. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Ask your next question, please. I, I, I am. I just want to know the grounds, just for the record, the grounds for the sustain. Ask your next question. Your Honor, the grounds should be put Mr. on the Brooks. record. Ask your next question. I'll address this all at the next break outside the presence of the jury. Ask your next question. Your Honor, with all respect, I think the jury Mr. Brooks, under 90611, ask your next question, or I will determine that the cross-examination is now closed. I'm, I'm keep gonna going. Ask, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. I just think the jury deserves to hear Mr. Brooks, I'm testimony. instructing you to stop making those statements. The jury will disregard. This is the cross-examination. It's not your opportunity to make legal arguments or... Uh, to testify. You'll have an opportunity if you so choose to do that later. With all respect, Next is, that is not question. question fine. The jury just deserves to know. All right, um, under 90611, um, the cross-examination will be determined. Question, Sir, you didn't follow my very clear instructions. Um, does the state have any follow-up? No, Your Honor. All right, our, thank you, ma'am. You may step objection down. Objection to that, Your Honor. I, your objection's not, noted. Ma'am, you I may step not. down, and after she steps down, I will be excusing the jury for a few moments. Please rise for the witness and for the jury as they leave the courtroom. Mr. Brooks, please wait. You may have a seat, everyone. <clears throat> to specifically address the repeated request by Mr. Brooks for the court to state the grounds, sir, I am not legally required to do that. Many times it's very self-evident. Either the objections are baseless. Many of the hearsay objections are baseless. Um, your objection to hearsay is it's not hearsay. Uh, so that's why, to me, they're self-evident. I say sustained, and we go forward. So you need to be aware, sir, that when you ask for the grounds, you're asking me to state a legal conclusion in front of the jury, um, which I don't feel is necessary uh, for the reasons that I've already stated, that um, you're asking me to highlight uh, my opinion on relevance and my determination on relevance. So going forward, you need to be aware of that. And I will caution you once again, sir, 90611 is the statute mode and order of interrogation. The judge shall exercise control reasonable by the control judge. over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. A, C, make the interrogation and presentation effective or undue embarrassment. Um, and it goes on, but for purposes of what I'm going through, that's the most relevant portion of 90611. So when I give you the warning that under 90611, I will cut off your cross-examination, it's because you're violating 90611. 
And so, is that a judicial determination that I violated 906.11 when... I'm advising when, you, sir, um, it's not a specific determination as to anything uh, that's happened thus far, just a summary of why I am relying upon 906. 11 throughout the questioning of witnesses and the presentation of evidence. Your Honor, um, so uh, with I'm, that, we're going to continue. I'm going to have the state be ready with their next witness. Your Honor, I'm, I'm not interrupting you. I'm letting you make you, a clear record. Mr. I, Brooks, you have actually interrupted me. I just let you go through the whole st uh, citing of uh, 906.11 without saying anything. I, I, I'm not asking for the parties to make an argument under 906.11. So I'm advising reading? you. Stop interrupting me, please. I'm advising you, sir, uh, so that you have hopefully more knowledge and awareness as it relates to the statute that I've cited um, dozens of times during this trial. I'm, I'm well aware of what I'm citing, Your Honor. Well aware. <laughs> All right. And so, it, and I'm just seeking for the record to be clear. Um, with all due respect, Your Honor. Um, that's judicial misconduct because you're not allowing the jury who deserves to hear certain aspects of testimony. Um, like I stated yesterday, under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to face my accuser, which means that I can question about clearly the plaintiff being the accuser. How come I can't question about uh, if a witness may know or have had any prior interactions or any conversations or or anything of the sort with the plaintiff who has yet to show their face. I'm not going to have a debate with you over the law at this point. I've made my rulings as it relates to certain questions that you have asked and whether they're relevant, whether they're vague, whether they call for speculation or a whole host of uh, reasons that a question can be objected to. I'm not further going to address uh, your uh, position on. Um, May I request a legal reconsideration of your ruling, Your Honor? Interrupted me. I'm not done with what I was trying to say. Um, it was no way for you, me to know that because you paused. I'm sorry. I apologize. Just because I paused doesn't mean I'm done. But so, you paused for quite a while, so I wasn't sure. In any event, sir, we're going to keep going. Um, any error you believe I've made, you can raise again on appeal if you are convicted, but we will proceed forward. Does the state have I'm their next witness available? Please do not interrupt. I'm asking this that's why question. I just, that's why I was Mr. just Mr. Brooks, quiet. you're interrupting. Stop. Does okay, the state have available... Over their next witness. We do, but could we please request a comfort break, Your Honor? I'm sorry, but we sure. haven't gone about two hours now. All right, that's as fine. We'll take a 15-minute uh, break. That's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. For the record, Your Honor, this, we haven't addressed subject matter, uh, jurisdiction. We are off the record, Mr. All right, we are back on the record. Then appearances are as they were before. State have their next witness available. Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> All right, let's bring the jury back out. I don't uh, consent to being called by the name that this court chooses to identify me by. Um, I'm going to state for the record that I'm here as a third party interviewer on special appearance on behalf of my client. Can that be noted for the record? It was noted this morning. May it be noted again for the record so that we can keep the record clear and accurate. The appearances are as they were this morning. They are no different. Bring the jury out. And we have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction, Your Honor. We still haven't, I still haven't been shown any verified proof that All rise. this court has subject matter jurisdiction. And at this point, may I request an affidavit that you, Your Honor, have no bias, no conflict of interest, and no interest in the outcome of this case? Mr. Brooks, the jury's coming out. We'll address your legal issues later, if I deem them appropriate. Judge, do you hold the full Mr. judicial Brooks, power please, of the state, or is please, this the military right, can power? Can you please take the jury out? Thank you.
Do you hold the full Mr. Brooks, jurisdiction? Mr. Brooks, just wait until the jury's out, please. I ask that you show that respect. I, I will. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Brooks, just make your statements. What do you want to advise the court today? I want to first say, state again for the record that I do not identify by that name, nor do I consent to being called that name. Uh, Your Honor, um, with all respect, uh, I'm merely asking you, do you have the full judicial power of the state or is this military power? I'm sorry? I don't understand what you're asking me, sir. I'm asking, is and on this... on what legal basis are you I'm, making I'm, that request? I'm asking, for the record, is this a common law, common, common law court or an admiralty court? What, what, what are we in here? And I'm, I'm requesting an affidavit that you, Your Honor, have no bias no conflict of interest or no interest in the outcome of this case. Um, and the reason why I'm, I want to state this clearly for the record um, mainly is because of the bias that's been I shown. I have not been getting any certified copies of any requests that I've made, which I was told by this court to uh, address inmate communication forms for anything that I that I I've may done need. that. I've complied with Every that. time I've needed something of the court pertaining to documents, I've done it the way the court has asked me. And I've always stated that I wanted everything to be certified. I have By yet to court get docket that. sheet was not a certified copy your honor um, of your oath of office. I asked for that to be certified. You stated for the record that you would not give me a certified copy of your oath of office, which you are required to show My Sixth Amendment constitutional right that has been pretty much that is based guarded. on the fact that I have the right to face my accuser, which would be the plaintiff, state of Wisconsin, in this matter. They have yet to show that a claim is, 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 is a living human being can only make a claim. An entity cannot make a claim. I've requested for the complaint to be provided. The complaint from November 23 of 2021. The amended complaint. From November 29th, the second amended complaint from January 12th of, of this year, 2022. I there was no record those. of a bond in my docket sheet. I'm asking that I ask for that to be verified by proof. That hasn't been provided. There's so many uh, biases, clear biases in, 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 in questions that are not being asked based on judicial determinations made by your honor. I think at minimum, and, and I, I deserve think clear for the subject matter jurisdiction to be verified and proven. I've raised that issue numerous times, pretty much every day, every time I, I, I come before your court, Your Honor, I, I address that. I've been been has disregarded, be even though they've been filed into the record, even I haven't got the time copies of, of any of them, which I'm, as we sit here today, I, I, I'm still not even understanding the nature and cause of the of the charges. That hasn't I'm been basically proven. sitting Can here be confused because I don't understand why these proceedings are are allowed to continue when there's so many things they that have, have not been provided, provided in my discovery I'm without so much information valid and i believe information that it should be verified to this matter. and it should be and proven not, for the record i move for this case to be dismissed for failure to appear by the plaintiff and failure to state a claim for which relief can be granted everything that i'm saying it has merit and it has we see here today i'm still uh being charged with charges that shouldn't even exist based on the testimony that we've heard for There's the last so many few days left to still the be proven. prosecution team hasn't even proven that they're licensed to practice law in Wisconsin. Are they haven't proven are they just bar association uh, uh members or do they that have has not been proven state which issue license that issue for the record. I'm not even sure if that was even recorded in and, the and your honor you still haven't stated for the record if you have full judicial power of the state or is this military power? That has nothing been has been proven. Not subject matter jurisdiction. Not licenses to practice law. My Sixth Amendment right has been basically no trampled. Complaints over. have have been sh shown. Neither of the by three the that, that you told me to request them by in, nothing is certified that I that I get copies of when I clearly ask for them to be certified. And to, it's, it's to the point the where, I, Your Honor, 
you should you should recuse yourself from the from the pre, uh, presiding at this point if you're not going to um abide by the oath that you which swore, was in your oath correct you swore to protect the constitution that swore to protect States. we the people if that is not being done every here. valid argument that i raised is 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 taken by the court as a sign of disrespect or, or a sign or, of trying uh, to cause a problem be when i'm merely seeking understanding because i don't understand i'm merely seeking to understand why this information has yet to be provided <laughs> and, and there's still no argument to this matter court. even as i sit now saying this there's still no proof being provided how is Zero. this case allowed to continue without these uh documents and filings is there any legal factual basis that that can state why this information has has not why been the provided? docket sheet is why incorrect so much on the docket sheet that should be on record that if that's we not even the, in there the uh the recordings of the record they would see was brought up numerous times that that doesn't I'm, even I'm show just, up i'm just asking for your honor to which be is fair. another right that i have the right to a fair trial and the right to an impartial i can hearing. go on and on and on about what's not what's I have not the right being to done. face my accuser where's where's the injured party who's who's making I asked your honor numerous times for your honor's name you wouldn't answer i asked did you have a claim against me you did not answer i asked the whole courtroom did anyone have a claim against me. No one said anything. stated for the record a non-responsive answer is an agreement, which would be a tactic agreement by you, Your Honor, that you don't have to answer these questions that the you plaintiff in this matter, which was stated by witnesses in testimony to be the state of Wisconsin. But when I asked, do they see the state of Wisconsin present in the courtroom, the question is shut down, which is a valid question. The plaintiff should be present in this matter. Where is the plaintiff? Who's bringing because the, we know bringing the claim? Can't bring a claim. It has to be a living, breathing. No human one being. is stated for the record if they're the injured party. Not your honor. Not the prosecutors. Not anyone in the court has stated to be an injured party in this matter. No one. I have the right to demand that person. the court place in the evidence any unrevealed contract. Has that been provided to me? Have that been placed in the evidence? I would like to see it. I have the right to, which is my right, inform the jury about the truth in their duty, in their rights. That's the First Amendment and the Sixth Amendment. But I'm repeatedly told to shut the question down when this is valuable information that the jury should be privileged to Once know. They, they were chosen to know. To sit on this jury, why are we keeping they information away the from power them? That they, they decide. To know. The matter. Why are we keeping information, valuable information, from their knowledge? And frankly, is it that's dis that's disservice, disservice to the, court to the that jury? They're not allowed to hear things that they should know. It's our right. They should be informed of to inform them of everything that they have the power to know to do. And to it would know. be a travesty they for them to make that decision without being fully informed. And these are all the valid right protests valid and mean. object. If any of my rights or demands are not being met, I've done that numerous times only to be shut down. I've raised numerous uh, times the, the issues that I didn't consent to anything that may have been suggested on behalf of my former attorneys. I've never even consented to them making a plea on my behalf. As a matter of fact, when it comes to a plea, I haven't even had the, the opportunity to entertain any plea that may have been suggested by the prosecution. We haven't even, not we one haven't time even was it ever that. brought to my attention that... The prosecution even wanted to offer a plea. I have the right to challenge the jurisdiction of this court, which I've done numerous times. I have times. the right to demand that the code be constru construed in harmony with the common law. Oh, I'm just referred that. to as pro se when I've raised the issue that I'm pro per. I have the right to conduct my defense pro per free from professional restrictions imposed upon licensed attorneys, which this court is well aware that I am in not fact, a licensed attorney. The court attorney. is also aware that I only had three days to prepare for a trial that the prosecution has been par been prepared for for a we whole year. We see these boxes right here. This box alone is 45 or 50 pounds full of so much information. I I I, I haven't even gone through it. was stated for the record that the discovery the in its entirety was brung to my housing unit on the 29th of September. 
which trial was scheduled, that would be a Thursday, which trial How was can scheduled I possibly go through for all Monday. That? All the paperwork, all the the uh, digital discovery and, 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 and things of that nature. How can I go through all of that and be prepared That's in three days? bias. I did not have time to prepare for this. Everything I'm doing is off the top of my head, winging it, taking it as it comes. When the court is well aware I that I was the not issue prepared, that it should be an adjournment at least at the minimum it should be an adjournment because of that fact at least to let me go through all the discovery that was the no valid reason was stated for that when your honor knew there is no possible way humanly possible that I could be ready for a trial of this magnitude in three days that's I have the right advice. to face the injured party claiming damages that's under article 3 and the 6th amendment I raised that issue again. Where's the injured is the party? injured party present in, in, in court right now? Can anyone can anyone make a claim against me? Can you make a claim against me? Do you me, know of anyone that can make a claim against me, Your Honor? Can anyone right now in court, anyone, make a because claim against me? Because of that, Your me. Honor, the motion to dismiss should be granted. Based on that alone. There's there's no injured party in this. So who matter. makes the claim? Who? I have the right to put the judge on notice of my intent to appeal. And any ruling, decision for the record during that I would have case. to wait until appealing process. But it, my right is that I can raise that issue during the case, which I've attempted to do. That's been shut I have down. the right to specifically reserve all of my rights, which I do. I have the, the right to say what I want and to be heard under the First Amendment. And when I attempt to do that, it's taken as a slight to the court, a disrespect to the court, or me intentionally coming into the court to be disrespectful, which I, I never that intend that to walk into not my intention. Your never, courtroom never is in my disrespectful intention. intentionally. I never come into this courtroom to disrespect. But because anyone. I don't understand, I raise these issues because they have, I have the right to object to any statement made by the judge or the prosecution. I've done that. And been repeatedly shut down. Without a lawful explanation. I repeatedly asked the court for a, a, a motion for a finding of fact to determine if things are being done legally. I've been denied that numerous I times. I have the right to recuse the judge at any time. Which is also a I right. have the right to a speedy and fair trial by I think it's safe jury. to say that my speedy trial right has definitely been violated because this matter has been taking place for... Roughly I've never year. consented to waiving anything related to a speedy trial. And if that was done, it was done without my consent or without We're my way knowledge. past the speedy trial date. When way the, past. Uh, change of venue motion was was brought up. I believe that was the first time I came before your honor. It, it was in early March. Decided by your honor that that wouldn't be decided until uh, the 20th of June, I believe. That's that's over the 90 day mark right there for a that speedy was trial. Denied and and I, I I still don't understand how that was denied when it's when it's clearly obvious that at minimum the venue should have been changed based on the fact of the magnitude There's no of possible the way anyone in this county would not have some type of connection or some type of knowledge, whether they were told something by someone that they the may know. The news reporting alone, just that alone, there's no way that this trial should be taking place in Waukesha. That's Shawshank. obvious from, that. that's the obvious. way the motion was presented, the coverage alone, the, the political campaign ads that plastered the defendant's face all over the TV every single day. Every time a political uh, campaign was brought up, it made reference to this incident. The fact every that every single time uh, people have children that go to the same schools in this county, that people may have worked you with yourself, people in your this honor, uh, uh, stated that you at one time worked with the father of one of the people that, that was injured in this matter. That is a clear conflict. Conflict. You of also stated right for there. the record that not only did you work uh, with with this father, but that uh, 
at one time they may have donated to uh, your, I don't know if it was to you becoming a judge or uh, I, I would have to look through the docket, but you said it on the record that they donated money to uh, uh, a cause of yours. You also stated that when you had gained knowledge of the incident and that their family member was injured in the incident, that you reached out via phone. I don't recall if it was text message or an actual phone conversation, but you put you that also stated on that the record. The nature of your relationship was strictly professional. I don't know about you, Your Honor, but I've I've worked numerous jobs, and I know what professional relationships is and personal relationships. I've never had the cell phone number of anyone that was a, a personal relationship saved to my phone that I could reach that out immediately when I learned a personal something. relationship of some kind. Whether whether hanging out from time to time, having a cup of coffee, or hanging out time from time, grabbing a beer, or hanging out from time to time, watching a game, or or or, or anything of that nature, it would it would definitely be more than just strictly. I go back to the Sixth Amendment again, in terms of the evidence motion that I raised. That was denied without any explanation. That would be strictly to uh, place in the evidence any unrevealed contract. That's under the Sixth Clearly, Amendment. Clearly, there's been repeated, repeated, and repeated violations of my Sixth Amendment. We all know that the United States Constitution is the law of the land, period. It trumps everything. We also know that any law repugnant of the Constitution is null and in void. There's you know still that. No, no basis for the motions being shot down. Why was I why was I not granted the motion for finding the fact? Why did it take so long for me to be brought my entire motion for why discovery? was the motion to prove jurisdiction why not very motion to dismiss the case for all the reasons I said, not being granted. Which brings me to the motion to subpoena witnesses. I did everything that was asked of me by the court pertaining those. It was understood subpoenas. by the court that this is my first time I didn't ever understand having how to this. properly pro properly fill out the subpoenas at which the prosecution volunteered that they would give assistance. The only assistance I received was for them to check to see if it was filled out right. That was it. That that doesn't amount to any assistance. I was still left to fill it out on my own, and then when I did that, correction still had to be made, which would verify what I was saying. I don't know how to do this. But I still complied to what the court asked of me. And even then, it was a big old thing about I can't the subpoena. subpoenas, the plaintiff in the case. Well, how can I not subpoena the plaintiff in the case when under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to face my accuser? Which how is could the, the subpoena the not be filed? And how could the plaintiff not be Called to the witness stand. That begs the question of does the plaintiff even exist? Which it was stated for the record that not only by a, a witness, a detective, Detective Casey, that got on the stand and said on the record that is an entity, which is not a living, breathing human being. And then it was stated again by you on the record, Your Honor, that the plaintiff is an entity. So the question still stands. How can an entity bring a claim if it's not a living human being. So where's the claim? Will will the the plaintiff in this matter, the state of Wisconsin, be allowed to testify? Will they be allowed to be in the courtroom? No, they will not because they don't exist. Therefore, the claim doesn't For exist. For all those reasons that I just stated, the case should have been dismissed Once those issues time. were raised, this case should have been And dismissed. at the very minimum, it should have been di dismissed because those still have yet to be proven. We're still talking about jurisdiction. That's been being There's asked for no, over a week. No providing of license to practice law yet. Not even by you, Your Honor. Why was I not provided with a certified copy of your oath of office? Why, why would you not state the name that is on file with the Secretary? I made reference the first of time the state. to the Secretary of the Treasury, and then you stated on the record that it's the Secretary of State. Even though you knew what I was referring you to. You referred to your name tag. But that's not the name registered. We both know that. So why wasn't you gave that proof verified? Uh, a copy of your oath is not office. certified. So how can I verify that this, that is the true oath of office that you signed? 
How can I verify that it, that is that is that's valid. the reason why I asked for it to be certified, which you stated for the record you will not do that. You never stated any uh, legal reason I have the why right to ask for that. Legally. I also have the right to call any witnesses to assist my defense, which is the main reason why I subpoenaed the plaintiff. I also matter. have the right to challenge all relevant laws in this trial in terms of their intent, interpretation, fairness, enforcement, and whether they serve and protect the people. The design of the statutes of the law was written for the common people to understand. So that would mean the final determination or interpretation of what the law says comes down to the people. You know this, Your Honor. Are you or are you not a public Every service? filing up until the point that I started representing myself was filed in a name that was represented by all capital letters, which is not my name. Nor has it ever been my name, nor have I ever seen that name or individual. Every single filing or paperwork was all in capital letters. Ever since September 20th, now everything roughly starts around to go here. to lowercase letters. Why is that? What, what prompted the second change? I chain? still have filings that have all capital letters. Which I state every time I come into your courtroom, Your Honor, that that is not my name, nor do I consent or agree to being called that name. I'm merely here as a third-party intervener on behalf Did of I my client. for value and return for value. I, we go through this every every time I every time I come here. You bring up every uh, time. Illinois versus Allen. When we had the issue of me being removed, Illinois from the versus Allen states that. There are three options when a uh, defendant is being, you stated for the record court. that you identified a fourth one, which is not cited anywhere. So the question would be, how did you come up with a fourth option that's not written in that case? Did you take it upon yourself to add this fourth option to justify denying me? My constitutional right could have done the three that were stated. Any one of the three you could have done that were stated in the case. Nowhere does it say you can create a, uh, a not fourth option. Not my constitutional rights. I'm sure you know about Title 18, USCS 2381, which states that it's treason not to uphold your oath of office. Treason. You repeatedly make judicial determinations that clearly prejudice in, uh, uh, my defense. And then when I question you about are you making judicial determinations, I'm repeatedly not giving legal down. valid grounds on objections. noting objections for the record to make sure that the record is I'm clear. sure somewhere in the jury instructions you informed them that the state of Wisconsin was but bringing the claim. But then you make the judicial determination that I'm not allowed to ask questions about the That's clear bias. And it prejudices, it prejudices my You defense. know also that you have an electronic filing I find system. it hard to believe that I was told yesterday about my um, subpoena for the plaintiff that I had to wait for a filing in a, in a, in a time stamp. When I've seen it done numerous times in, in, in just a few seconds, right in front of my prosecution face. needs something filed, it's, it's filed. I have to wait or I have to wait to the next day. That's a clear bias and a clear Obviously, the court opinion. knows that I'm not privileged to the same uh, filing system. Which brings me to the reason why I brought up the issue of assistance of counsel. Under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to assistance of counsel. It doesn't say anything about representing yourself without assistance of counsel. Having counsel represent you and having assistance of counsel is two totally different Your Honor things. gave me paperwork that was a, a waiver of we both counsel. No, any contract right. can be altered 
if I don't agree I to cross it out everything in that paperwork that I did not agree or consent to and specifically wrote on that paperwork that I do not waive my right to assistance of counsel. At the very least, I should have been awarded a standby counsel. Not someone to represent me, to speak for me, but someone to help me do things in a timely fashion. Get things filed in a timely fashion. Get motions Make preparations uh, to, to get things done that I don't have the privilege to do in my current situation of being housed at the Waukesha County Jail. I gave you back that paperwork and you accepted the paperwork that I altered that you understood that I didn't agree and consent to those things that were altered. You accepted that it is and you in the record. It. I have copies of the same paperwork that you accepted. So when you accepted that, with no objection, that becomes attack of the grief. But yet, I'm still forced to come in here with, I think it's zero help. Clear that that prejudice, knowing that the prosecution has everything that they need for this matter at, at their fingertips. And... I have to jump through every hoop possible to even get things filed in a timely fashion. It was stated for the record that the unit that I'm housed in, in the Waukesha County Jail, and per jail administrator Angela Wall, only have. allowed out of my cell for a few hours a day. So I'm roughly locked down. 22 Not hours given a day. The privilege to access everything that I should be able to at at the time that I should be if I was arranging this population. Been made months ago for me to be at, at least in some form general population. With reference was made try. to being able to use uh, Lexus Nexus or whatever it's called. We call it the law library. That may be the easier way that I'm only a, it. allowed to access the law library at certain the times during the day. The rule of the jail is that when you're you not access in the day room, the law library, which is on tablets, we are not allowed to have those tablets in our cells. That prejudice, my defense. How can I work on my case? How can I look up certain case laws? How can I do any of this? If I, I don't even have full access some type of order that could be made by the court to allow me more time out of my cell or to talk to jail administration about allowing me more time out of my cell to be able to, to be use frank. those when needed. In a proceeding of this magnitude, there should not be even a time where I'm not access, where I don't have if access I'm not to, in to the, the court materials room that I need. Or sleeping, I should be awarded the time to work on this case, seeing as how... I only had a couple days to prepare for a trial. Which brings me back to again to even right now with trial going on, there's still political ads being shown every day that reference there's still this incident. Talk throughout the jail about it. Uh, been a ton of hate mail received to the jail since it the did die down this. for for a little bit, but it picked right back up. The closer hate we mail got that to comes the trial. from people right Which here in the city gives of more credibility to the venue. Yet and still, that was denied. It's impossible and for an impartial to, jury to be found in this county. Uh, discredit people in the county that can be impartial. It would be unfair to say that no one can be but impartial. But with the level of scrutiny that, that, that this whole incident has, the, the reporting, the, the Facebook groups, the, the, the constant, there, there were Facebook groups Created reporting because of this. Live stream on, on, on Court TV has comment Where, sections. A, a lot of insensitive and nasty things. The sheer are said. Ins insensitivity of, of some of the things that, that are that are I know a lot of people here. probably don't care about what I'm about to say, but it still needs to be said because it's truth. The fact that it matters that is, I have children too. Family too. They Levels also too. have been ridiculed and 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 had their names drugged to the mud and, and, and have threats. Loved ones that had to leave their them. home. Because they were getting threats. Children that didn't mailbox. feel safe going to school because they were getting bullied behind. And that's what not was being to sweep anything under the rug. 
to constantly whatsoever say and report this incident as an attack, attack, uh, attack, attack. Terrorism, terrorism. It's unfair and it's, it's definite, definite tragedy. Definite. And that There's will never be swept be under the rug. Healing that, that has to take it's place. It's going to be difficult. And that, that should not be swept under the rug. But it's very what insensitive so and unfair to not recognize that there, there's many, many, many other victims that never is for people about. to paint a certain picture, mostly from this county, to put this picture out there. It's not only hurtful, but it's insensitive. And I'm it's sure not the court read true. through the motion for a change of venue. I'm assuming, though it was, it was a lot, a lot of paperwork in those. Motions. I think it was obvious, obvious that the venue should have been changed. Obvious. It's too many connections and it's too close. If it's there too was close. any chance for a fair trial and an impartial jury, it should not have been in this county. But yet it was denied without any validity. Zero. There's so much bias that's going on that. And even with all this, for the record, we still have no proof of jurisdiction. We still have no bond on file in the docket sheet. We still have no plaintiff. We still have no We're claim. not sure of the relationship between you, Your Honor, and a father of one of the people that was injured. We're not clear on that relationship, no matter how well prepared the speech was. Because it was a prepared speech. That was obvious. Where's the proof? I just asked the, that, that same question. Can an affidavit be given that there is no bias, no conflict of interest, and no there's, interest there's in no the outcome proof. of this case? If you hold the full judicial power of the state, or is it the military power? Arguments. You've now repeated yourself a number of times. So I'm going to turn to the state to see if they have any response. Mr. Brooks Objection. knowingly to be called that name, nor do I know any individual by that name, Your Honor. Please do the courtesy of not interrupting the state as they did not interrupt you for over the almost 50 minutes that you spoke. Thank you. Please continue. Your Honor, the record is very clear that Mr. Brooks knowingly, willingly, voluntarily, and intelligently insisted on representing himself in this trial. He has no constitutional right to stand by counsel, none whatsoever. The court patiently went through the form and advised him of many of the things he's complaining about here today, the resources of the state, the knowledge of the law, his ignorance of the law, and his words to this court, and I quote to the best of my ability, it don't make me flinch one bit. That's what he told this court, whatever it was, two weeks ago. Now he's here complaining over and over and over again how unfair this is to him. It's highly offensive. I don't know because, unfortunately, I was talking to my investigator if he accused this court of treason, but I certainly heard that word come out of his mouth, and it is absolutely shocking that he would throw such a word around so loosely in this courtroom. This court has been exceedingly patient, exceedingly respectful, of his rights at every turn, at every turn. I want to address this claim that he only had three days to prepare for trial. It's absolutely a false statement. The record should reflect that he does have three banker's boxes on his table. The record should reflect that every time the state calls a witness to the stand, he swiftly and easily turns to those boxes, which appear to be alphabetized or organized in some fashion by the public defenders who turned it over to him, 
and quickly removes the folder of the witness who's testifying and effectively cross-examines that witness using notes from the public defender. We know that because he's tried to confront witnesses with the notes from the public defender. He is not going into this blind or with one arm tied behind his back. They did all the homework and he's simply sitting here reading their notes, reading their cross-examination questions and asking the questions and then going on to his ridiculous questions having to do with his belief in the sovereign citizen movement. There's no way this record would reflect that this defendant is not adequately prepared for trial. He's never asked for a speedy trial. He makes conflicting statements. On one hand, you violated his rights because it's taken us so long to get to the trial. And on the other hand, we're rushing him to this case and he hasn't had adequate time to prepare. He is not, not, not denied access to legal materials in the jail. The record is very clear from the jail administrator. It should not be confused. He misleads this court intentionally to say, I only get out of my cell two hours a day. That is a fact. That is for his own safety so that other inmates do not inflict physical harm upon him. He has access to a tablet. He has access to a computer. Whether he chooses to ask for those resources is up to him. And again, you warned him, Judge. You fairly warned him. And he basically acted as if you were insulting him and said it didn't make him flinch one bit. Much of the last 50 minutes, which this court has graciously extended him the opportunity to go on and on and on, is nothing more than legal mumble jumble. He's reading from some typewritten transcript. I can see that from where I'm sitting. I don't know who's giving him these materials, but he has an agenda here. It's to stall, delay, disrupt, intimidate, and it's not going to work. Thank you. Objection to that. Um, Your Honor, that's, that's, a, that's a load of crap. Mr. Brooks, that's my opportunity now. I gave you about 50 minutes. I just want to object to, to the, the disrespectful comments that, that was just made. I, I'm not trying to hold you up from what you're going to say, but that's a load of crap. Mr. For, Brooks. for her to sit there, Mr. Brooks, for her to your sit there, objection is noted. For her to sit it's, there, Your no, Honor. it's my turn. Let me let me go through this. I graciously gave you fifty minutes to raise all these various points that you want to bring up. I then gave the state an opportunity to respond. That is the proper procedure. I followed decorum. I followed civility. I did not interrupt you. The state did not interrupt you. Your objection to their characterization, it's noted for the record. I am going to render a decision at this point. Please listen and please do not interrupt. As I listen to the litany of issues and arguments and complaints raised by Mr. Brooks, I would note that they are all unsubstantiated, conclusory allegations and assertions without an adequate basis raised in law and fact. There have been several misstatements by Mr. Brooks uh, regarding either the record that's been made, items that's been provided to him, or the basis for the court either sustaining or um, sustaining, I should say, or overruling objections, for an example. Um, there's been a mischaracterization of his rights that he claims to have. As I have stated repeatedly, your constitutional rights are not absolute when you're in a criminal trial, meaning your First Amendment right is not unfettered. It is frankly no different why the case law is very clear. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. 
No one has a First Amendment right to do that. The issues you raise, for example, regarding subject matter jurisdiction are baseless, they're frivolous, and they're not anything this court needs to address further. The fact that you now are asking questions about whether this is admiralty court or a military court or a court of competent jurisdiction is frivolous. This court has jurisdiction over the criminal cases brought before it by the state of Wisconsin. In this particular case, these are allegations that criminal conduct occurred in the city of Waukesha. The city of Waukesha is within the county of Waukesha. This court sits as an elected official in the county of Waukesha to hear these types of cases. That is clear. The only argument or relief that I could discern through the course of those 50 minutes was Mr. Brooks's request that this case be dismissed for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. And as I have just indicated, this court has jurisdiction. The fact that you complain about what I do, it's noted the record is going to be very clear. All right. I have a court reporter who's taking down the record of everything that is said and done in this courtroom when we are on the record. And so I don't have to all the time say it's noted for the record because we're on the record. I sometimes do that to hopefully make it clear to you or to note it. I don't always do that, but I'm not required to do that. Those sovereign arguments regarding uh, written findings of fact, bill of particulars, regarding contracts that you enter into, regarding admiralty court, uh, etc. They're baseless, sir, and this court need not address them further. Now with that, I know it's 1130, but I would like to get one more witness on before at least we break for lunch. The jury, of course, has been out for quite some time. So I'll instruct Madam Clerk to bring the jury out. For the record, Your Honor, we didn't uh, bring up the Higgins Levine 415 U.S. 533 decision. That was that was not addressed, and the, the issues are still not addressed. There's still been no proof to anything that you said, anything that the prosecution has said. There still Our hasn't been. Our is noted, and we will continue. Bring the jury out, please. There still hasn't been uh, Mr. Brooks, any proof. I've addressed them there to the extent that I will. Proof. There still hasn't been any proof. I never once, the comment about me not flinching was when you said that there's 66 years of experience at that table. That's the comment I said, that doesn't make me flinch. That was mischaracterized. That should be for the record. There's still, been no, there's still been no proof. Mr. About Brooks, please stop. I'm not going to address whether there's verified proof or not of jurisdiction, because whether not, there's anything along those lines. It is frankly not required under the law. You may disagree with that. You can take that up on appeal, whether that's an interlocutory appeal or whether that's a direct appeal if there is a conviction. But I'm not going to address it any further. Because there's no verified proof. There does not need to be, sir. All right, it I believe the jury is coming out. Is that true? Now? In order for a case to. All right, the to record should reflect should that the jury is coming out, and we are about to continue with the state's next now, witness. Once was the plaintiff addressed? That wasn't addressed. Where is the plaintiff? Where is the injured party? That's because the jury will one. disregard the statements presently yeah. being made by the defendant. Because y'all don't want the jury to know the truth. The jury will disregard <coughs> those statements made by the defendant. I see, I see it is not his opportunity to testify. They are comments on. and as such are to be disregarded. I see what's going on. Ain't gonna work. All right. Thank you, everyone. You may be seated. Not gonna work. Attorney Opper, you may call your next witness. Ma'am, on the day of November 21, 2021, did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade? We did. And uh, was one of the people that was with you your daughter? Yes. 
And what was her age at the time? Uh, her age at the time was 10. Okay. During the parade, were you present when the dancing grannies were struck by the red SUV? Yes. And did that get captured by your daughter on her iPhone? Yes. Display exhibit 139 to the witness only, please. Go ahead. We're going to just play it for just a few seconds first to make sure you can look at it and uh, identify this, that we're talking about the same video you provided in this case, okay? So yes. we'll play about three, three or four <laughs> seconds worth here. All right, does that look familiar to you? Yes. Okay. Is this the recording that your daughter captured that afternoon? Yes. And uh, the same recording that you turned over to the Waukesha Police? Yes. All right. Move to admit number 139 and permission to publish. Objection. Exhibit 139 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The objection is overruled. Sevens, is that what you remember seeing that afternoon? Yes. Did you hear those loud thuds? Yes. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Brooks may have some questions for you. Any cross? Yeah, and I object to being called that name again, and I don't consent to it again for the record. Noted. During the uh, parade, were any of you or your family injured? No. Do you recall seeing a vehicle approaching? Yes. And about how far was it from you when you saw it approaching? Uh, roughly, like, I don't really know of an estimate of the amount of distance. It was roughly when it started um, hitting the dancing grannies. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone before that that point? No, the the crowd was rather large at the parade. Do you remember the the large crowd? Uh, do you recall it being pretty loud at that at that point? Every parade I've been to has been loud in general, so. So it'd be fair to say that that one was pretty loud. Yeah, I suppose. Did you hear uh, at any time a report of uh, shots fired? No. Did you hear any shots? It was loud and chaotic. I can't for say for sure if I heard shots or not. So would it also be fair to say that if a, a horn may have been blowing, you wouldn't have heard that either? I would have heard a horn. It, the we weren't that far from where the vehicle came through on the road. So it'd be fair to say that you think you would have heard a horn, but not shots. I didn't hear any shots when the car went past. No, that's, I'm not asking when it went past. I'm saying uh, the question was at any time. So I, I should have been more clear. I apologize. At any time. Any time during that that moment. I don't believe I heard gunshots. I, I've never heard a gunshot before, so I can't really say yes or no. So it'd be fair to say you wouldn't really know what a gunshot would sound like. Correct. Seeing as how you you've never heard a gunshot before, would you? Would it be fair to say that? It might be, it might be, uh, really loud. I wouldn't know. I've never heard a gunshot, so I wouldn't be able to guess. Do you recall if it was any music playing? It was a parade, so well, uh, there was music at some point. Com Marching coming bands. from, coming from any of the vehicles in the parade? I don't recall at the moment. Uh, when were you notified that it was? When were you notified that it was a possibility that you may be called to testify in this matter? 
I received correspondence in the mail. Um, I don't remember the exact date of when I received it. Um, August, I think. So, not that long ago then would, would be accurate. Yeah. Or pretty recently, rather. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you recall if that was in subpoena form? Yes. Did it state by whom the subpoena was sent? Uh, the district attorney's office. Did it have a name? Uh, Susan. Did you seek to testify in this matter? No. Did the district attorneys ever uh, tell you in any way that they were the plaintiff in this matter? Those words were never spoken to me. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. You don't have to answer that. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, sir. Did you or your husband or anyone in your family that was present at the parade uh, file any claims on the, on the matter? With who? question not really please rephrase at any time did you file a claim uh, with any I guess the agency or anything like that no. in, in regards to the incident no did any inform did any information that you obtained in regards to this incident have a complaint with it? Objection, Grounds? Sustained us to the form of the question. Have you ever seen any complaint related to this incident? Objection, Grounds? Sustained us to the form of the question. Do you know of any complaint with this incident? Not sure I completely understand the question on that. Um, what kind of complaint? I mean, please rephrase. Have you ever seen any uh, issued charges in re in relation to this incident? I'm sorry. Grounds. I did not understand what Mr. Brooks just asked, Your Honor. I believe he said the issued charges. Oh. I object to that on relevance grounds, Your grounds. Honor. Uh, overruled, she may answer. I haven't really been keeping up with the news media on the trial. Um, so, no, I haven't seen a list of the charges. I was, I was referring to um, if uh, you had uh, received anything from the district attorney's office about the charges issue. No. Are you aware of anyone bringing any claims or suits? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. You don't have to answer that. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Can you recall if you saw any tents to the vehicle you saw? And by tents, I mean like tinted windows or anything of that nature. I don't recall if the windows were tinted or not. Do you recall where the vehicle traveled after it passed you? No, my, uh, my priority at that point was to get everybody inside and make sure they were safe. So you didn't observe anyone struck after what you saw initially? Correct. And you stated that you haven't really been keeping up with the incident, right? Correct. So that would that would that in, uh, mean that um, it was your choice to do so, or you just kind of just disregarded it? 
Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Just for for clarity, um, you are not aware of any plaintiff in this matter, correct? Asked and answered. Grounds. The is that an objection? The objection is sustained. You don't need to answer that. I think you said that you were contacted back in August, correct? I received mail with the subpoena, yes. Um, do you recall before August uh, being contacted in connection with this incident? Objection. Grounds. Repetitive, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. No grounds. Next question, please. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Objection. Grounds. Repetitive, irrelevant. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Reason for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. No further questions. Any redirects? No, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you. All rise for the jury, please. We are in recess.